Let's start with a look at the device's connections and controls, how to use the Ready for Use indicator, battery operation, and how to perform operational checks. The Heart Start Intrepid connections and controls are carefully organized to facilitate ease of use. Color-coded ports for monitoring cable connections are on the left, ECG, SpO2, non-invasive blood pressure, temperature, and CO2 cables plug in here. A therapy port for paddles, external or internal, or a therapy cable with multifunction electrode pads and, optionally, a QCPR cable is on the right side. The printer is located on this side as well. If you are using the Heart Start Intrepid for transport or in high vibration environments, install the therapy cable collar that comes with your device. Operating controls and indicators are on the front. This is the Ready for Use indicator. The blinking green check mark tells you the device is ready for use with sufficient battery power for shock, pacing, and monitoring functions. The therapy knob is the on off switch. Just turn it to the desired mode of operation. The Heart Start Intrepid's display layout is comprised of five basic segments and is easily configurable. The display includes four wave sectors and a parameter area with related measurements. The Heart Start Intrepid is configured to populate each wave sector with a predetermined waveform when powered on in monitor, manual defibrillation, pacing, and AED modes. Wave Sector 1 will only display an ECG waveform which is used by the arrhythmia, heart rate, and AED analysis algorithms. Wave Sector 1 also contains the ECG calibration bar, the auto gain indicator, rhythm label, ECG filter setting, and R-wave arrows. Wave Sectors 2, 3, and 4 are automatically populated when parameter cables are connected. If the parameter source is the configured choice of a particular wave sector, it is displayed in that wave sector when available. All modes display general status information about the patient, including patient category, patient name or ID if entered, date and time, and event timer that shows the elapsed time of the current event, Wi-Fi signal strength, cellular connectivity status, and battery status. All modes, except pacing and AED, display paste status that shows the presence of an implanted pacemaker if selected. Device information also displays, including the current state of clinical global alarms. When alarms are on and not paused, the indicator is blank. If alarms are off, this message appears along with this icon. Technical alarms indicating an equipment issue appear here. The presence of a white arrow indicates there are multiple alarms. Physiological alarm messages appear next to the patient-related parameter they are associated with. The Patient Category button switches between adult and child patient categories, changes alarm limits to the new patient category, and adjusts the energy setting for defibrillation in AED mode. The Lead Select button changes the ECG lead in Wave Sector 1, cycling through the available ECG waves and changing the displayed wave and its label. The ECG Gain button increases the ECG waveform vertical scale of the primary lead by one setting. Press the Mark Event button to insert a time-stamped annotation on the ECG strip and in the event summary report to note events as they occur, including certain drug administration. This is the alarms button. It pauses all audible physiological and technical alarms for the configured time interval, pressing it during the pause interval to return alarms to their previous settings. 
Press the Print button for a continuous printout of the primary ECG and other selected waves with event annotations and measurements. Press the Print button again to stop printing. Below the display, there are five soft key buttons that perform the function listed on the soft key label immediately above. The button labels change according to the function you are performing. These controls are used for automated or manual defibrillation, synchronized cardioversion, and pacing. This is the Smart Select knob. Press it, and the main menu displays. Turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise to scroll down or up a menu's list. Press it again to select that item. If you have a numeric selection window open, turning the knob clockwise increases the numerical value, while counterclockwise decreases the value. Press it again to select that value. To load a new roll of printer paper, open the printer door by pulling up on the latch. Remove the empty paper roll by pulling up on it. Place a new roll of printer paper into the paper well, positioning the roll so the end of the roll is on the bottom. Pull the end of the paper out past the paper roll and close the printer door. Be sure the door clicks in place. To load a new roll of printer paper when the carrying case is installed, unlatch the right side of the carrying case by pressing both sides of the latch. Then, swing the side of the carrying case forward and change the paper as previously described. But, in this instance, when closing the printer door, be sure to leave a few inches of paper so the end of the paper is above the case. Depending on your configuration, the top of the Heart Start Intrepid may consist of a handle and the optional external paddles, or for non-external paddle users, it may include a paddle plate and solid handle. The Heart Start Intrepid paddle set can be used on adult, child, and infant patients. Both paddles have orange shock buttons that flash when the defibrillator is charged, and the sternum paddle has a patient contact indicator with these icons to assist in achieving good patient contact. Orange or red lights indicate poor patient contact, while green indicates good contact is made. Here, on the back of the device, is the battery compartment, which houses a rechargeable lithium ion battery. The Heart Start Intrepid battery has a battery power gauge located at the end of the battery opposite the battery tab. Each solid blue light indicates approximately 20% charge. A flashing blue light, farthest to the button, indicates the battery is too weak to operate the device and must be recharged before use. To install the battery, Align the lithium-ion battery in the battery compartment with the arrow on the battery tab pointing up. Push up on this tab and insert the battery until you hear the battery latch click into place. Here is the AC power connection. Connect AC power to charge the battery. The battery can also be charged in the Philips standalone battery charger. The USB data port allows you to save data for transferring patient information or to import configurations and new software revisions. Connect the wireless module connection here. On the front of the device, this LED indicates that AC power is connected and this indicator lights to tell you the battery is charging. This screen icon indicates the presence of a battery. As the battery drains, the icon displays incremental charge levels. This icon indicates no battery is installed. To inform you of device readiness, the Heart Start Intrepid is equipped with a Ready for Use or RFU indicator. The blinking green checkmark indicates the shock, pacing, and monitoring functions of the device are ready for use and sufficient battery power is available for device operation. A blinking red X and a periodic audio chirp 
indicate either a low battery condition or no battery is installed and the device is running on AC power only. A blinking red X and without a periodic audio chirp indicates a low battery power condition, but the battery is currently charging. The device can be used, but its battery only operation time is limited. A solid red X and a periodic audio chirp indicate a critical failure has been detected that may prevent the delivery of defibrillation therapy, pacing, or ECG acquisition. A solid red X without a periodic audio chirp indicates either there is no power available or the device cannot power on. If, after power is supplied, the indicator reverts to the blinking green check mark, indicating the device is ready for use. To supplement the automatic tests, you should perform shift checks and weekly shock tests or operational checks on the device. Philips recommends completing a shift check at the beginning of each change in personnel to help ensure that defibrillators are ready when needed. Philips provides a checklist to complete a shift check on the Heart Start Intrepid, including the ready for use indicator and related accessories and supplies. You must make sure the Heart Start Intrepid is not connected to a patient when performing an operational check. To perform the operational check, turn the therapy knob to monitor. Then press the Smart Select knob. Using the knob, Select Other. Operational Check and Run Op Check. This message lets you know you are exiting from all clinical functionality and entering a test mode. Select Yes to leave clinical mode. Then press the Smart Select knob to start the check. Confirm your device has a charged battery and an ECG cable connected you will be prompted to set the therapy knob to 170 joules. You will then be prompted to set the therapy knob to 150 joules. If everything is set up as expected, the series of tests will begin with a few interactions along the way. If not, you will be prompted to correct the setup, proceed with the test based on the current setup, or exit op check. As each test is run, the message window, In Progress, displays. You are given a pass or fail indication upon completion of each test. When the op check is done, a report is printed automatically if configured. The first part of the report lists test results. The second part lists additional checks you should do to make sure that you have the necessary supplies and accessories, and they are all in good working order. For details about these additional checks, consult the instructions for use.